week. A uh, very interest, interesting chat with Rebecca, who is an EMDR therapist. Um, a, a word I kept getting wrong, I think it's Gestalt. My German isn't great. Um, uh, she's a Gestalt therapist as well. But we had a little bit, if you haven't seen her, you haven't listened to it yet, we had a little bit of a, a therapy session kind of on the fly. And it was like five, 10 minutes of it. I had to kind of pull the ripcord on it because it was getting a bit deep. And I'm all about like showing my uh, vulnerable side, but uh, I didn't want uh, all the, you people tuning in and seeing that. Um, nobody needs to see that, I guess. But yeah, thanks for that. And thanks for your support during the week. Um, our guest this week is a, is a poet. And I, I'm guessing some of you probably know him already. And his name is Stephen James Smith. How are you doing, Stephen? Oh, yeah. I'm all right, Derek. Thanks for, for having me on. Uh, thanks for waking me up. <laughs> yeah, ju- just to... Just to... Like, the people don't realise, I guess, behind, behind the scenes. I didn't realise this was filmed and I was wearing my dressing gown and because uh, I, I didn't get back until... 4.35 o'clock last night from 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 a tour. I drove. I started yesterday in Glasgow, uh, and and drove from Glasgow down to Wexford after doing um four gigs in, in five days across the UK. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I thought it was just me. I like, just uh, dialed it in. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck, I better put something on. <laughs> did, like, you did. Newcastle, like. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but we did. We there was a moment where we thought we, we would just leave it, but we said like <laughs> Stephen made the call. And that's fair enough. That's well, fair that's enough. I've drawn attention to it now. I shouldn't put anything. No, that's good. How, uh, like, actually, I should ask, how did the UK tour uh, go for you? Yeah, it was it was great crack. Um, I uh, it was uh, it was the most fun I've had on a tour. It's the third time I've I've been on the road, sort of like doing my own sort of headliners per se. Uh, but this time I brought three people along uh, on the road with me. I had two musicians and a, and a visual artist. Um, so just trying to build a, a different energy and a different spectacle. And uh, yeah, it was great success. It was like, I mean, there's different ways of measuring success, mm-hmm. I guess. Like we, we didn't kill each other. We, we got like, which actually, uh, you know, that's, that's the success uh, being on the road. Like when it, it's intense uh, and, and the driving people like see the gig, but it's, it's fucking, ex- sorry, I don't know. I'm gonna, like, oh, you're good. It's absolutely exhausting. Um, like I started, uh, I drove like, so I live in Max for now. So the first part was grand because it was Ross Lair, but then we drove from, from Fish Garden, Wales to London, which was about a six and a half hour drive. And then you got to London gig and then you'd come to Manchester, Leeds and Glasgow and then like from Glasgow back to home to Wexford. So yesterday I spent uh, a, 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 about about six hours driving because I had to drop the lads back into Dublin as well. Um, so like it's it's great crack, but it, it it's it's really tiring. Um, and and like sales, I'll be honest, I've probably been too honest. I would tend to overshare, but like the sales were really low going out there, and we were going fuck. Is like how is this going to be? Um, but actually, they, they already picked up uh, for, for each of them. Like, there was nothing sold out, but from what I can gather across the board, that's what people are, like, all artists and like yeah. bands, that, that norm, the numbers are just down for everybody. Um, so I made a loss on it. Um, so I did. I have, I have to do the sums, actually. <laughs> These are, like, merch things to figure out, like, what I've sold uh, and all that, and I do the maths and I have my receipts and all that to tot up later on today, which which will be great fun uh, to know exactly what sort of pain I have to feel as a result of it. But, you know, there's other ways of measuring it. Like we had fun. We, we yeah. had real genuine connections with people in the audience and people like actually even some people flew to see me. You know, there was right. a couple that flew to Glasgow uh, to see me there and and people come from far and wide. So you, that's really quite a humbling experience. So it yeah. is. Um, so, yeah, it was it was it was good crack. Uh, I'm glad I did it. Um, hopefully you get to do it again. Do it a little bit better. I mean, I'd rather not make a loss on, on course, it. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually fortunate I might have a call after this as it happens to there might be a job coming my way, which is coming at the exact right time. <laughs> well, you know, you yeah. sort of have to lean into the world with a bit of faith, and so I'm, I'm hoping that if I can get this job, it will, it will soften the blow of the tour. You know, yeah, so, but like you said about you know being honest uh, with people about like you know, whether it's to do with sales, or whatever. But I think people, you mentioned about connecting through, through your writing, you know, and I think people respond to that quite well. Like when someone is very honest and they're not like we can be very uh you know 
inspired by success and Instagram and stuff like that. But, you know, not everybody's doing, like you said, a lot of the ticket, ticket sales are down. You hear a lot about a lot of art forms at the moment seem to be tickets down. So when someone's being very genuine and upfront with people about those things, I think that's a connection in itself, you know? Yeah, it, just, it doesn't help with the mystique, does it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but... I mean, I'm not that mystical. You'll fucking find me in Aldi down the road, so you will. Like, and, <laughs> but yeah, like I, 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 uh, some people tell me that I'm too honest online sometimes with, with what I share, and, and uh, or even like in advance of the tour, I, 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 um, I did an interview and I sort of said it, it could be the last roll of the dice, and, and I, I meant that sincerely. So I did, and uh, if I was to let my head rule my heart, it, it probably would be my last tour. Um, you know, because you can't you can't just go on the road and 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 and, and make a loss if you want to if you want to look at it as a business. But it was incredibly rewarding, as I say, and. Um, I enjoyed it an awful lot and that's largely down to the guys I was on the road with. I'm very grateful to them that they, they had faith and, and came along. And, um, so that, that was really great. Um, and hopefully we, we get to do it again and, and, and do it. And like, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, money is obviously not really a driver if you're, yeah if you're doing this, but, but you also need to, you know, be able to buy new tulips. <laughs> yeah, well, which are lovely, by the way, a lovely addition to it. <laughs> but listen, with, Stephen, we're going to go all the way back. Um, could you give us a, a, a short history of your upbringing, please? Um, bleh, right, yeah. I, so I was born in 1982 in Dublin. Um, I, I first grew up in, in, in between Knockline and, and Tala. Um, I come, if you, if you listen to the album, you'll probably gather I came from like a, a, a broken home, as it were. I, 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 I live with my mum and... Um, so yeah, that was obviously formative, uh, not to 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 paint that out to be the, the worst thing in the world, but like mm-hmm. it presented some challenges. Um I suppose though the biggest challenge for me growing up was I wasn't always the most healthy of, of children, unfortunately. Uh I had Crohn's disease and eczema and asthma, so I spent a lot of time in hospital, which um uh, yeah, probably probably has uh, scared me in certain ways, or or or, or, or t- you know, altered my outlook in life a little bit. Um, I, in terms of school, I guess I I I I I I wasn't the worst. I was maybe slightly cheeky on occasion, but not the worst in the class, and not the brightest or not the thickest uh, per se. Um, you know, but then again, people develop a different different ways and of different of course, yeah. you know intelligences and talents and whatever um and yeah when i when then when i left school i did mechanical engineering um i got quite sick again unfortunately as ended up in hospital and i deferred the year i dropped out then when i went back in the following year realizing i didn't really want to do mechanical engineering and i did all sorts of different jobs i worked as a barman and um, i worked in actually i worked in an off license in the crumlin shopping center in, in the malloy's liquor store which is probably the worst job i ever did okay um like just well it, it just uh, you're selling people their poison all the time yeah. and there was people coming in getting slabs of beer and then they'd be back in you know mm. a few hours later and it didn't feel great to be part of that if you know um but i you know I worked in hotels as a building site so recruiting consultancy for a short stint. That was my attempt at sort of like doing the proper job. And I think I still have the suit I bought for that, like <laughs> about 15 years ago, my wardrobe over there. And um, that was my attempt at, you know, making my parents proud or something like that and, and, and tone the line a little bit. But it wasn't for me. Um, so, yeah, kind of a bit of a, a checkered past in, in, in that sense. Like I didn't bounce around a good bit but I was always well I, when I was about 16 sorry it cut, cut across Derek if I'm waffling too much here you know going, he said nah. short and I'm kind of maybe you know nah, as long as short I only say that if people are worried about it being they think they have to you know be long it can be as long as short as you want so well if I'm born you just send me short no no um but yeah like I, I guess poetry sort of found me when I was about 16 um there or well music and I just played a bit of bit of guitar and, and learned how to well attempted to write a few songs and then eventually I heard about enough Mike Knight which was in Salary's Bar at Mines um just by chance from a, a fella who had a guitar in a bus a guy called Noel, Noel James Holdham a brilliant musician and uh got chatting to him and I went to see him the following day and I was blown away by him he's an incredible performer and writer and the following week I went back and I, I read a poem 
Um, it wasn't a poetry night, it was a music night, but the fellow Ray Beggins was grand with me getting up and reading a poem. And uh, that had a really kind of a transformative effect on me. I, I never thought I'd be a performer. I was quite, I can be gregarious sometimes, but other times I really just want to be quiet and I can be yeah. quite shy and uh, and I hadn't performed in public before. And so it, it, was, it was scary. Um, my mother, to be fair to her, like would have taken me to the theatre and to local productions and all that. So I would have been engaging with, uh, with going to gigs and, and, and art and stuff like that, largely through her. Um, but then I heard about a poetry night and kind of had all these stereotypical views of, of what it is to be a poet or what they might be like. But I'm also just a nosy, curious person and I will, I will go to virtually anything. Um, at least once and, and, and try and suss it out uh, for myself and uh, but I went along and it was great crack like you know there were just people talking about shit that we can all relate to mm -hmm. um, maybe some of it might have been a bit esoteric but maybe I can appreciate that more now as, I, as, I, as I've matured a, a little bit you know <laughs> not too much but a bit um, and yeah just all of a sudden it kind of became my tribe I got encouragement from from other people from from older poets and i guess i i try and attempt to do that now like we're just we're handing on the fire uh that's what it feels like i sometimes sometimes i'm, I'm called a young poet but like i'm not really i'm, I'm sort of like i'm i just turned 40 yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a young man anymore yeah. am I? I mean you know I, I'm, I'm a man uh, yeah. and um i i feel like this it's essentially like three generations of of poets uh, coming up behind me, whippersnappers, uh, mm. good kids and, and, and talented people. So, um, yeah, I, 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 that's, I feel I'm in that position now from when I went to this poet, you know, that's the people that encourage me. I'm, yes. I would, I would like to try and fulfill that role for others um, where, where possible. Um, yeah. Now, so now I live in Wexford, uh, commute down here in January last year, which, which I'm, uh, Loving actually mm -hmm. most of the time. You do get FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out yeah. on some things. Um, like you're based in Athlone there. I actually went to to Athlone to <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a there's an old church. Oh, what's it called? It's a Paul's Town Church or there's some church like a, it's about a five, ten minute drive from Athlone. Oh, it's outside Athlone, is it? Yeah, I was looking to buy it. Really? It was going for 27 grand. Okay. And in my head, I went down to visit about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, because, you know, it, it, we're all aware of the, the, the housing rental situation mm. in Dublin. And uh, like, while I'm lucky to be self-employed doing you know, this sort of stuff. Uh, again, sorry, I'm, I'm talking a lot here, Derek. So, ah. you know, uh, but I, 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 I kind of, um, I was trying to find a solution for my situation. And uh, would have been looking online all, all the time and I'm, I'm thinking, like, you do a fixer up or whatever. Mm. And then I remember seeing this church and going, that looks fucking cool. Yeah. Like, what do I need? I don't really need much. And it, 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 it's near enough to have long town, it's in the center of Ireland. You've got decent transport mm. anywhere else. I had a car. Um, and I had this, like, you know, trying to visualize could I develop this into somewhere for me to live in? And could it also potentially be a small, unique venue? Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I mean, it, it was 27 grand because it was dilapidated, obviously. Yeah, of course. But um, I thought, like, with with a bit of determination and goodwill, I could have turned it into something. Now, look, I, I'm not there. I'm in Wexford. Mm. Uh, but, you know, we, we could have been neighbours. We could have been neighbours. <laughs> it, 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 it would have been, we could have had an in-house podcast, which would have been lovely. But, um, Stephen, like, I know this is kind of a question I ask everybody, and people maybe overanalyze or overthink it, but when did you first become aware of mental health? Um, uh, well, I suppose, I suppose it, it's always been there in terms of friends and family, mm -hmm. but I'm not that I'm, I'm no expert, like, but the more I, I am understanding about it now, the more I realized it was actually quite present while I was younger, um, in relation to, to family members, um, but when you're young and you're a bit more ignorant than I am now, yep. you, you, that is your norm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even in terms of myself, like I 
you, you like while you have empathy and you try and relate to it, you, you think what, what's going on in your own brain is, is your norm. So I, I, myself and some friends and family probably suffered more than than I realized, mm -hmm. um, or uh, I don't know if "suffer" is the right word, but you know, uh, had had those challenges. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I suppose the way I, I can really relate to it now is through a festival that I volunteer with called First Fortnight. Okay. So it's a mental health arts festival that I think this is the, the was this the, the 11th or 12th, 12th year, I think it is. So I've been volunteering with them for 10 or 11 years. I first did a gig with them and then just really connected with the crew. And I, I, I volunteered the following year and I programmed uh, poetry um, and, and, and sometimes some music. So I, I've ran, I, I'd hazard a guess about about 50 events for them in the past wow. 10 years maybe even more and, and right, right across the island um so in fact it's normally the first two weeks of january because the first fortnight uh, tend to be the, like that's the, the first two weeks of january the most difficult time of year for a lot of people traditionally you know you've kind of just gotten over christmas you've spent too much money you've broken new year's resolutions you've dealt with family you don't have to deal with you've drank too much yada yada you know, it's a tough time. So they put on the festival then to try and give people a bit of an outlet, a bit of an uplift and, and all that. And it's grown, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And they actually have um, services where they, they help people at risk of, uh, who are homeless or at risk of being homeless. And they've rolled out new, they'll be rolling out children's services later on in the year. And then there's another thing called Mining Creative Minds, which is a sister project, which provides free counseling services for people that are working in the arts sector as well. Um, so it's a great organization. Mm. So I've been volunteering with them and, and that's helped me to, to understand and learn a little bit more about and the importance of connection and talking and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, which which yeah. we're, we're, we're we're as a society we're we're a lot better versed in these days. It's 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 a lot more prevalent. Yeah. So it is. Um, yeah. Um. So when when you were growing up, and you 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 mentioned there about you know learning how to play the guitar and stuff, who were the the artists that were inspiring you at the time? Um. People like I guess Christy Moore, Nina Simone. Um, Manic Street Preachers would have been the first ever CD I bought. Now everything must go. Um, uh, like I would have listened to some hip hop as well. Um, it was quite eclectic then. You were you were you were bit you weren't just indie music. You were you were all over the place. Kind yeah, of. well, the first ever tape I bought on that old was Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> And and then the, the and the second this is a bit of an outlier now for you uh, was the Phantom of the Opera, right? Um, and the reason being uh, when I was in primary school, uh, my, my folks you know were 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 separated and they both had to work. Excuse me. So I used to go to um, I used to go to a childminder when I was in primary school, and the, the lady her daughter collected this and she loved it and she played it in the car all the time. And then the mother always played country and western music. Um, so I was just exposed to this. So like, and, and, and I, you know, I, I, that was an influence. My mum loves jazz music. So she goes to jazz gigs all the time. Would have taken me, particularly every Sunday after church, we went to this jazz gig out in uh, the Cliney Court Hotel. She kind of likes the right. Dixieland, the old school. These were all old timers. They're all, yeah. like, you know, 50s, 60s, well, 50s is not up, you know, like sort of 60s, 70s, yeah. 80s, all these old, old fellas. Uh, it was great crack. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, I, uh, for me, I don't really care about genre. What I care mm. about is do people, are they trying to give you something? Are they trying to, like, I, I would rather somebody not be a pitch perfect singer, but, but, but sing with, with, with heart. Yeah. Um, like there's a great session in Dublin in the, in the teachers club, which I haven't been to in ages, unfortunately, every Friday they do it. It's called on Goldine. Mm. And uh, they normally say at the start of that night is a cappella singing. And um, they say it's not about the quality of the singing, it's about the quality of the listening. Mm. It's just a nice way of disarming yeah. everybody and going, that's what we're here for. Um, so that, that's what I would tend to gravitate towards, um, you know. But yeah, I'm into all sorts of stuff. I think I, I was thinking about this uh, when I knew you were coming on and I was, I was thinking about, you know, what I would uh, say as, as uh, lyrics or, or poetry that I would have, you know, grown up with and I would have liked. And I, I don't know if it was because of, and this isn't anything to do with the quality of the poems when we were doing the leave insert. It had nothing to do with the how obviously the poems were excellent poems, but they weren't anything that drew me into to the world of poetry. And then when I saw, and it's interesting you mentioned about not 
you know, worrying about the voice so much as what, you know, what's being said. And I, I think of like Dylan and Leonard Cohen and Tom Waits as like, as I'd see them as the poets, you know, um, did you, when, because obviously we're, we're the same age, so we would have had the same, you know, poems and stuff through Leaving Cert. Were those poems inspiring to you at the time? Um, at the time. Well, I, I did like to try and peel back the layers and, mm. and, 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 and relate to them for sure. Like, obviously, I... I suppose the most powerful line from from our childhood is probably a four foot box of foot for, a foot for every year, mm-hmm. um, you know. Mid term break is we can all relate because you're 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 in school and mm-hmm. here's a story about it from from the perspective of, of a young child in school learning about their 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 sibling dying, um, like and obviously that's that's famous Seamus Heaney there. Yeah. Um, that's that's an incredible powerful poem that that's a given um but i probably appreciate you know stuff like circus animals desertion and and, and no second troy and and, and 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 like all this sort of stuff uh you know i remember my father mm. um you know funeral in my brain i'm just thinking of soundings the book yeah. you know austin yeah. park and, and all these um Poem. Yeah, I have it over there. Actually, I should have, should have picked it up. Uh, I haven't read it in a while, but yeah, I I I, I really you know maturing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I appreciate that more so now. Um, funny, you know, I shouldn't be uh, hum, humble brag here for you. I'm actually in a book over there that um, I'd stand up, but I, as you know, I just have my dressing gown on, so <laughs> I'm I'm nothing from below. <laughs> Not <laughs> the first. Like across here. <laughs> Sorry, GMI. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm in a poetry. I'm in a, a, a leave insert uh, textbook over there. One of my one of my poems was uh, two of my poems. I think actually were chosen. To be, uh, they're not, um, they're 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 not prescribed reading. They're they're mm. they're, they're additional reading or whatever. So so there's kids out there that are God love them having to read over some of my poems now potentially um, for for the leave and search. And I, I don't nearly know how I feel about that. Um, yeah, that's sorry. I think it's class, to be honest, but um, yeah, it isn't. It isn't. It's like okay. Yeah, yeah. I suppose not, not, not the goal. Like I, yeah. I, I, um, and like I was really lucky with my English teacher, Mr. Blackmore, uh, and then and then another for the leaving Dougie Miller. Um, you know, they really helped me to connect, particularly Mr. Blackmore. He like enacted, I can remember him doing like the Merchant of Venice in mm. class. Uh, and and he he was an actor I, years later than I saw him acting on stage just by chance. I didn't know he was he was gonna be in it, which was a lovely encounter. Um, but I do feel sorry for some kids and when they're maybe they feel forced to engage with poetry and to 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 dissect it. And so yeah, I mean there's there's maybe a time and a space for that, but yeah. uh, you know, when I go into a school, if I'm talking to kids, I, I'm just trying to present my passion for the stuff that I like. So I'm not looking at the lead and search generally. I'm, I'm just like, I bring in hip hop and I'll bring in contemporary yeah. poets as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I'm going yeah. off. No, there. you're all good. Listen, Stephen, I'm just going to read out an advert. So you just relax there for two seconds. Okay. I'm going to get this right today. 123 episodes yet to run it off. Uh, I would not be good at your job. I, I will say that. So, Fusion Training Centre, Monksland, Athlone. A place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Centre or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Centre, train like a warrior. I also want to add in, uh, I am coaching a uh, uh, women's class at the moment. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu and self-defense is going very well. We're a few weeks in, everybody seems to be enjoying it and I'm, I'm, I'm loving it as well. So if you wanted to try something different, give me a shout or give Martin Infusion a shout and they'll sort you out. Um, so I wanted to talk about the You're album. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of like that. but Yeah, cool. I didn't know that. I, that's interesting you're doing. Yeah. I've been trying to get a little bit fitter. I got pretty fit, and then I let it, let it, let it drop off, or or, or pile on. Should I say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Since I moved down here, I I've lost, I lost, I was a hundred kilos when I moved down to Wexford. Uh, well, just under January last year, I got down to eighty four kilos. Wow. Um, about um, 
about a month to six weeks ago. I put on my 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 better half has come over to stay with me for a while, and we we've been eating out and and, and yeah, indulging in chocolate. In fact, when I came back last night from uh, the UK, I, I I brought a lot of shortbread and chocolate. So you know my own my own my own fault there. Um, but I was looking for for some martial arts around Wexford Town a while ago. Yeah. But when I moved down, obviously it was COVID. So um, I, I think there's like a couple of boxing clubs and there was one or two martial art clubs as well. And I would, um, not that I wish to fight anybody. Um, no, no, of course. I, I, I would nearly be scared of the damage you could do to somebody. Like, mm. I mean, you know, I, 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 no desire, but I, I, I like the idea of the chess behind it and, and using the brain that way. And, and uh, I, I, I would be, I need to, if I don't have a goal to work towards, I like I was just trying to get my body fat down to about yeah. like fourteen percent. Uh, I, I more I got it there, but now I need to. That has gone back up, you know. Um, but I like the idea, of maybe joining something. I, m- I must investigate that. Sorry, well, I'm, no, just respond I, to what you're saying there. No, like, I think jujitsu is something that's like I've mentioned it. Obviously, talked about it before in the podcast, but. Uh, the reason I went to, to uh, jujitsu was because I didn't want to strike, hit people, like punch people. Kickboxing wasn't my thing. I had no interest in that. But and you, it's funny you say chess because we talk about jujitsu. It's like chess, uh, you know, of the you know two people are basically on the ground and you're trying to whether it's choke people, you know, joint manipulation, all that stuff. Uh, there is no striking, but the fitness levels go up a lot because it's it's qu- it's intense. You know, if you're trying to, to stop someone from you know, try to choke you. It, you, you know, you're using a lot of your muscles from all parts of your body. So yeah, it's something like worth, something worth looking into that. But I mean, if not, you know, you might prefer boxing, you might prefer one of the other martial arts. It's just finding out what fits you, I guess, you know, yeah. Um, but it's, it's worth, it's worth having a look into if you, if you haven't seen two people in the middle of a jujitsu thing, it's worth having a look and see. Well, I, like, I guess maybe one of the reasons I would be adverse to going to the boxing well, a couple of reasons. Like I don't really, I don't need to get any more blows in my head. My, my, the grey matter is, is, is fading. Uh, it's in sharp decline. But two, of my grandparents had Alzheimer's as well, so that's actually really? the biggest fear. So I don't, I wouldn't want to kind of instigate that any further. Um, but then I guess with the striking, you've got your joints to worry about, and I yeah. don't particularly want to have to worry about um them in, in old age. And, and thankfully, all my joints are more or less okay my, my left knee i got a bit of a bang in it last year but I'm, I'm all right now with that um so yeah maybe i need to investigate yeah this. have a look like better half is looking at me going <laughs> when's that gonna happen yeah yeah um but so like your album see no evil which i've been listening to a lot of the over the last few weeks and uh i find it very inspiring because i think it's it's interesting talking to someone after you've listened to their their you know their art and You've mentioned a few things within the conversation so far that have I can see in the in, in your in your words, you know, um, what was it like when you were you mentioned like you were chatting to your uh, the music producer and stuff with regards to picking a theme or, or your favorites? How do you pick the songs or the, the pieces of uh, poetry that go into them? We kind of let Gareth do it. That's <laughs> um, yeah, so the the music producer was was a pal of mine, Gareth Quinn Redmond, uh, who we just left off last night in Dublin uh, after the tour. Uh, so Gareth is predominantly an ambient uh, musician. It's, this is the first album he's ever produced, as it happens, and we did it just across here. I'm lucky to be by the IRC oh, nice. and recording in, in, in our from recording studios with Gavin Glass. And, and there was other people that came along, like there's there's a nice eclectic mix of people there. Um, but yeah, I sat on the sofa just there and uh, read a lot of poems. I mean, there was a few core ones that were, were mm-hmm. going to be on it, like my poem, The Gardener, was always going to be on it. Um, and um, probably Dublin You Are, although we were nearly thinking it might be nice to, to leave that off right. um, as it happens, but but it, it found its way onto it. Uh, Saintly Sister was something I'd kind of worked on with Garrett before I wrote that in Bridget's Day in 2020. And I sent it on to him and he'd done some music production on that already. And we happened to just do a, a gig uh, before. And that was one like uh, as part of the Seen and Heard Festival in Smock Alley. 
that was our first live performance together um, where I think I did three poems and he did three ambient songs. It was like just a, a sort of half an hour gig, which was which was good crack. And from that, we realized it was something, there was a bit of a chemistry between us on stage and, and then as collaborators, or we thought there, there was <laughs> enough to keep on working together. And um, so that was always going to be on it. But yeah, genuine, the rest was just sort of read poems and uh, whittled it down to, to about 15. And, and, and we recorded, I think, 11 and nine made it onto the album um there's one in particular that well there's a few obviously i want to talk about but and i, I it's an irish title and i, I apologize to everybody for yeah. this once again imram or, or <sighs> imram all right so because Stephen, you don't know how many times i mess up irish on this podcast it's incredible and like even i had people on who whose job it was to write books about irish uh, the irish language and i was still messing up words but imram okay there's a line in it um this man is seeking solitude and in doing so has brought the loneliness into his own heart. Um, when I was at my very, very lowest back in, it was uh, 2008. Um, when I heard that line, it was so fitting to what I was doing because I was seeking solitude to, to, to kind of get away from people. You know, the, the weight in that song is, or in that piece of poetry is, is about, uh, well, I'll let you describe what the, the poem is about rather than me kind of going through it. But I wanted to say... Interpretation is just as valid though, Derek. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, actually, do you know what? Yeah, I understand, yeah. Um, and, and the idea of of taking... Someone wanted to take their own life and, and seeing things from... Almost seeing things from above themselves, seeing things from outside themselves. And, and this is where the music... I found that music, and I have a lot of notes here about the different um, performances in each song, but I've there's an amazing representation of the kind of scattered mind that people have when they're going through something like that. The way Gareth would have, you say, ambient uh, music, and it's so perfect for this thing, and they go together so much. And the first time I listened to it, it, it genuinely touched me very deeply because it did bring me back to that time you know but towards the end of it obviously it's not as you know there's 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 hope in the end of it i guess yeah um okay we, we we've all we've all faced certain fears and, and had shit to deal with and and uh, i think it's important to uh, to realize that it's 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 a cycle um uh, I, I'm I'm in relatively good form today and, and have been for a while, thankfully. Um, but I'm sure there's some shit waiting for me down the road. And I to think that the, the more I grow up, I'm I'm maybe better equipped to deal with that or or knowing that it is just transient. Yeah. Um, and being mindful, like I, I <laughs> like it's not quite as deep, but like last week on the tour the accommodation and needs got fucked up. I was like, oh my God, my head was absolutely melted. Uh, but then it got resolved, like, because I was had the guys as well that I was yeah. looking after. But then I, uh, later on, we were having a nice meal together and I just I had to remind myself and be able to separate that out. And when I wrote that poem, I was down in Kerry at an artist's retreat in Kilreely, down near the bottom of Skellig Islands. And uh, I, I wasn't expecting to write that. I was down there to write other stuff uh, as it happens. And uh, I just felt this incredible darkness come over me. Uh, and the poem was written uh, relatively quickly um, or, or whatever it is. Maybe it's a prose piece or, you know, again, I'm not going to be too worried about trying to define what it is. Um, but I think because it just sort of poured out of me uh, so uh, I don't like uh, effortlessly, mm. you know. Uh, although I didn't pronounce that quite well, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> effortlessly. Um, <laughs> it, it, I felt like it, it got the groove of what I was trying to say, um, and that's maybe why it, people connect with it. And I think that's that one. I'm pretty sure is Garrett's favorite, oh, and yeah. uh, that's one that he particularly connects with, and 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 he insisted that that was on the album. So um, maybe that's why you feel the music is perfect for that one because Garrett is is you know it's resonates with him it's it's the that's the amazing thing about a lot of it look like, because i found you know my immediate focus was on the words you know because because you know i suppose they're front and center but when i hear these there's little bits there's there's the the accordion sounds and uh, uh, an ode to tony mcmahon 
That's it. That's, that's Cormac Begley. Who, 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 right. who, who, so in that, sorry to cut across you. No. But that poem, Tony McMahon's Den, was written in this house party in Dublin, the Liberties, and, and it was Cormac Begley who was playing at it along with Steve Cooney. Um, and I just happened to be there as he gathered from listening to it. But, but I'm friendly with Cormac, and Cormac is an absolute genius as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I he recorded that in Dingle uh, while, while listening to the poem. And I, I did basically. I went into the studio. I recorded everything in one, more or less in one take, right. um, and uh, then sent that on to Cormac, and he recorded that down there. So I felt it was important for for the integrity or authenticity of that particular poem that that Cormac was represented on the show. And it like it, it's a it's beautiful because it, it's very Irish. You know, it's it's the 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 music is very Irish in it, and I think I hope I'm you know right and saying that you know you're obviously very proud of your irishness and of your uh, your roots in general um uh yeah like uh, aware of 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 our heritage and uh try to um i'm trying to learn more about my heritage and that's part of the, the kind of the poet's path as it were um but like not in some sort of a chest beaten yeah. nationalistic way, um, which I think, you know, there's a dangerous narrative there that that one can go down. Um, so, yeah, like proud of, of, of the, the goodness within within this land and, and, and our people, but also very aware of the some of the bullshit that comes with all of that. <laughs> well you know yeah and you also represent that quite well like you you put that across quite well in your work um another thing in the music i just want to bring up actually because there's certain things that um i love in 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 music you know whether it's uh whether it's a, you know a well-played piano or a cello or something but there's a i hope i'm not wrong in saying there's, there's a stand-up bass in saintly, saintly sister which is just i mean because it's right it's here in the right ear and, yeah. and the first time I listen again, listen to music, but it, or listen to your words, but it's, you're getting dragged over a little bit by by something that sounds. And do you know what I know, Stephen? I don't know if you noticed this about kind of I guess modern music, but there isn't that sound of the the you know the finger sliding down the string, or you know the, that the actual noise that instruments make in when they're in connection with human hands. And I think in Saintly Sister that's heard, and it was just maybe something like that. Maybe that's the reason I was picking up on it because it sounded like the person was in the room playing it, you know. Yeah, so that's Cayman Gilmore, right? Um, playing the double bass, and he's he, he's an absolute genius. So he, he, his band is uh, the Sun Collective, and uh, he also plays with um, the Crash Ensemble, and you know for the RT Orchestra, and I've mm-hmm. seen him. You know, in the Yabby, he's he's a yeah. high level musician, the multi instrumentalist. So I was really lucky that that came and agreed to to be part of it. I kind of had a, a wish list of people that I I wanted to be on the album, and and thankfully everybody I asked w- w- came along. So like I have Laura Quirk from Lemoncello does some vocals on the Gardener, and uh, Jess Cav from uh, formerly of band Bark and like he's performed in the main stage with Hosier uh, at the Electric Picnic and, and like huge gigs and mm. uh, with, with, with loads of people and there's also a poet in her own right so, so like Jess so I've been friends with years so so she was on it Conor Begley Con- Conor O'Brien from Villagers plays muted trumpet on, on, on that as well and um, yeah because I've kind of, I'm started to name people now I forgot somebody <laughs> yeah, yeah. but you know it was great uh, to get them on and I, I think some people might have expected me to like not to not to name drop well I won't bother but like I kind of know a few relatively high profile mm. people along the way and, and maybe they might have expected them or me to try and lean on them a little bit but I didn't want to necessarily force that either um you know uh, and, and, and 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 you know to try and be on anybody's coattails or yeah. to, to be able to stand on its own right and um Maybe I'll maybe I'll collaborate with other people in the future, and I love collaborating. So I yeah, do. of course. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad you picked up on on Kane's uh, playing because uh, that was added to the mix a bit later. Like w- it was nearly signed off on that track, as it were. But so Kane couldn't get down to the album to the to, to the studio down here in Wexford the day we were in. So he ended up recording in in Garrett's house. Um, 
so we did and uh, as soon as I heard I was like oh that's that's a fucking killer yeah there it just he's so sensitive to it um and also like I suppose you, you're talking earlier on about influences and whatnot um and I mentioned my mother taking me to jazz gigs it's mm. just, just this nice jazzy yeah feel to that um which which it obviously didn't have before he was in and then connor bringing in the trumpet as well it's great it's, it's fantastic and there's a lot of um you know there's a lot of tenderness on, on it there's a lot of uh, you know um empathy for 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 people um for well for a lot of people but a lot you know the elderly people you mentioned in it you know particularly in um daniel the 89 year old and the last the, the see no evil uh track and it just i wanted to like and you said you did them in one take or something, but do you need to get into a certain, I don't know, like, I know you're not getting into a character, but do you need to be in a certain place to, to speak about these? Because you can hear emotion coming through on, on some of the tracks. Yeah, that's the job, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, uh, I don't mean that like a job in a, in a flipping way, but that's, mm. that's, that's the goal. You need to connect to it. Um, and if I'm not connecting to it, I wouldn't want that to be a take that's on the album. Mm. Uh, so, like, they were more or less one take uh, wonders per se, but I, I suppose I had to get myself into the right frame of mind um, to, while I was in the studio and, and also being around people that you trust. So Gavin Glass is just, uh, he's a lovely fella. So he has known Gavin for years and, and, you know, they want you to get the best take. So I didn't feel any pressure. There was no strangers there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I felt just how Gavin and Gareth created the environment enabled me to, to deliver the poem. And, and actually I took some direction as well from Gareth because to, typically uh, I can get a bit excitable on stage or I, I, like I, can, I can talk quickly. Maybe I'm talking too quickly now. Um, so with the, with, the, with the album, we really just like stripped it back and just I was just sitting there. And even for the gigs, I just sit down I'm not up there jumping around the plate, not that I really would be, but like I'm just really trying to get into that headspace. And um, some of the things I do is like a, a sort of a, a visualization to, like, for example, with the, my poem Dublin, you are. If I'm like that, you have that in me like a muscle memory now. I can yeah. say that without thinking about it, right? But that wouldn't be fair if I'm performing that for an audience for me to just be saying it and not thinking about it. Like, mm. uh, so. Uh, and if I if I know I'm not present in the poem, I'll say that poem to Pat Ingalls be in my head. Right. I, Pat's my favorite poet, so like I I can visualize going around to Pat's and and having a cup of tea. Now I haven't seen him in a while now because of COVID and whatnot, you know. But like I've been to his house a few times and I see him sitting down by his fireplace, and I'll say the poem to him. Or recently in the gig uh, in Leeds, I was saying my poem, The Gardener which is a poem for my mother. And I realized uh, I was, whatever happened just before I said it, like, you know, because look, the album is heavy, okay? Mm. But the gigs aren't heavy. Right. Like the gigs, there's fucking loads of laughter in the gigs and there's loads of audience interaction. And we're all taking the piss out of each other and telling stories along the way and, and just setting things up and that in some context. So if somebody listens to the album and goes, Jesus Christ, I don't know if I go on to one of those gigs, uh, I mean, fair enough, they don't want to, like, you know, but, like, uh, there is an awful lot of laughter. Yeah. And, and then, uh, so sometimes that can maybe take me out of where I need to be for the next poem. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like, this particular night in, in Leeds, uh, I probably said something ridiculous. In fact, I know what I said now, but I won't, I won't repeat it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I had to then do this poem because work with the artist, Steve Simpson, the, who was drawn live art, he kind of needs to know a, a, a set list right. a bit more so just because he has certain key things he needs to get to build up this picture that he's, that he's developing. So uh, I had to be the gardener next. And uh, I realised I was saying it and I wasn't meaning it. And right. I was, I, so I, I had to have a conversation with, my, with myself in my own head while I was saying the poem. Yeah. And the, what I did was... I took my mother for a walk through the village that we were in. So we were in a place called Torner, which is on the outskirts of Leeds, about uh, about 10 miles from Leeds city centre. It's a beautiful, uh, it's like a hot fuzz town. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's really idyllic and picture perfect, but there's probably loads of debauchery. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I don't them about that. <laughs> so, uh, but I found this little small poly tunnel 
uh, where people were growing their their veg, and there was a lovely, lovely little babbling brook. And and my mother, I could visualize that she would have liked this town, you know. Um, like you can see the plants behind the peace study and the tulips, and I have a little smart garden here as well, as it happens. So we're growing. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, um, I'm growing some um, lavender and, and, and uh, apple mint and uh, sweet peas there at the moment. Oh, nice. So, like, basically, I brought my mother for a walk through the village to look at the garden. Their right. gardens, and that's how I connected with the poem. And uh, I, I hit that point sort of a bit a third into it. Um, so that's what I'm, I was trying to do, I guess, while we were recording it as well. And uh, it doesn't always work, like you know, yeah. on a drive set, and you have to fucking do the thing and, and move on. So, uh, like, but I'm out there, little sort of techniques that I use to to make sure I'm uh, attempting to tune into the poem and the intention in the poem as, as best I can. And like so, he sounds a bit he, wanky, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he he, what, he fucking took his mother. For I'm a not going to say anything about he, that. Yeah, it sounds... not he doesn't. He's not funny at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I want I wanted to ask because I like I suppose in a lead up to people might have seen you on the late late and and uh, other voices are on YouTube or wherever. And uh, you did um, WR on on the late late. And when people may look at that and think to themselves. There's a lot of words, an awful lot of words. I know you say it's like, it's like muscle memory now, but having heard your explanation to how to get into the, you know, the place you want to be, it makes a lot of sense now looking at the Late Late Show gig because uh, the, the performance, it's it's very dynamic. It's got the correct emotion and stuff like that. But the, at the end of it, you go as if, you know, as if the the everything was a weight that had just been lifted. Am I reading that wrong or was that just kind of relief? Because that's a big, a big uh, gig to, to do. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I've actually done the late day twice. Yeah. And the first time was more difficult. Okay. Uh, reason, few reasons for that. Um, not difficult, but like, I mean, I was up for it. Um, and I, I have memorized my poem Dublin You Are uh, off by heart, but I, so letting in a little bit of a secret though, for that performance, uh, it was a pre-record. Mm. So it wasn't going out live. Um, and we were in the studio really, er well, not, well, early enough. I think I was out there in the studio all day long for, well, for, for, for about seven, eight hours maybe, because there was so many people to get through. And people, we're doing uh, a few takes. So actually I was asked to do two takes of that. Now I, like I did, I didn't need to stop or whatever, but I did two takes and then I, uh, I said, you choose whatever you want. Um, but I, I tried to, to give the same energy. I don't, I, I can't really tell if there was much of a difference, but mm. that's so maybe they just wanted other cameras. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. But I did that in two takes. Um, but the first time I did it was in 2018 in London. Um, and it was, they, they had, so this was like a special episode where they were looking at the, the Irish in, 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 in Britain. Mm. And uh, I did a poem called This Community, which was a commission for the London Irish Centre, who I've, uh, Got a lot of time for I, I I I've been doing gigs for them for for a few years and they do amazing work. Like it's not just a venue; they do loads of outreach work and particularly the the older Irish and sort of the forgotten Irish. Um, so that meant a lot more in terms of like where I was, who I was representing, and it was live TV. Yeah, you know you're going okay, fuck Steve. Oh, this is like you know this is your biggest moment per se and uh there's probably over a million eyes on you right now it's sink or swim mm. uh and i i like to feel that uncertainty and to lean into it and again i spoke a bit about fate and going and going well you've asked for this Stephen. Like I could have said no, not that I would have wanted to, particularly when it was for the London Iron Centre. But I was like, "How can you can you cope with this? Or is this going to be an absolute car crash?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm really curious. Like so, and like I've I have dropped lines or I've made mistakes, of course, in gigs. You know, you're not infallible. Uh, but that moment, I was like, "Okay, how will I respond to this pressure of a million people watching me live on TV? Let's go for it." Yeah. 
So yeah, it's been. You did all right, to be fair. Oh uh, yeah, I was happy. Yeah, yeah, like I was happy with it. Um, I felt it connected to to us, and um, it was sort of like a watershed moment, nearly more for my parents or for mm. for. For, for for some people to go, all oh, right, okay, if you've done the late night, like you're a you're yeah. a success. I mean, yeah. whatever whatever success is, you know, like there's there's loads of ways of measuring that, but it, it sort of validated them more in uh you know that that, that I that I'd been on there. Or sometimes I work in schools so like uh, uh, don't do it as often as I have done on, on COVID's obviously messed things around a good bit. But like you'd be going to a school and and the, and the receptionist would be like, uh, here we are the late night <laughs> you know oh you heard your poems the kids day it's nice so though I, isn't it it's, nice. it's, it's pretty cool that thing. happens um you know but now it's a few years ago now so it doesn't happen obviously as often but but that was uh that was a bit of fun to to, to, to notice that on occasion for sure like and um when when uh there's a, there's a line towards the end well at the end really of uh, uh wr and uh, you talk about dublin as your heart mccree and you say i love you most of the time you see Dublin, you are me. So obviously listening to the two it over and over, which I have done. And, and, you know, I, I kind of might know the answer to this, but maybe who, people who, who haven't, what part isn't you of Dublin? Sorry, what part isn't me of Dublin? Well, you say most of the time, I most. love you most of the time. So what, 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 when is, I shouldn't have said what part, right? I should say when, what, what part, what? When don't I love Dublin? Yeah, that's what I should have said. Right. Um, well, when I see the poverty. Yeah. Like, uh, Wexford is, uh, you know, again, like pros and cons to, 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 to moving here. Pros and cons to everything in life. Um, uh, and there, there is, of course, poverty here uh, and social issues. That's, that's a given. But... And it's obviously economy of scale. It's so, so much smaller. But like you, you, when what I what I realised it kind of became desensitised to was the sheer amount of poverty in Dublin. Mm-hmm. And now, as a sort of like an, an outsider per se, you know, like it's still my home, but um, or is it? <laughs> um, but like going there now, I'm actually shocked all the more of the the amount of homelessness, the amount of, of open drug selling, the amount of litter. Um and I I I'm big enough fella wouldn't be too scared walking around but I, I don't feel as secure yeah. walking around there now these days as it as it happens and that's just sad and I think there's been bad decisions made on a governmental level and on a council level uh for for you know decades mm. that that have caused the issues in the city and there's so many amazing people and people trying to do good uh. That you know, that I'm sure we all know, and sometimes you feel like they're fighting, uh, uh, you know, they're uh, an instrumental of a battle when 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 people that have uh, their their ability to, to 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 alter things aren't maybe choosing. They don't have the empathy. I feel uh, sometimes, yeah. uh, and that that's that's very frustrating. But but I will also temper that a little bit again. That having just come back from a tour of. Uh, Britain um, and and driving around and and, and seeing different places uh, and again economy of scale there's what 60 70 million people on, on that island as opposed to approximately six million here so you know 10 times well fuck me the poverty over in England is unbelievable absolutely shocking when I was driving around Manchester and that was one of the places where our accommodation was messed up uh, as it happens. So it was two nights the, the, the book and that company messed up with me which was, which was annoying but anyway it, it, it meant that like you were driving to areas that were slightly off the beaten track mm. and you're like holy fuck this is people's reality mm. um, and uh, it's a privilege to you know, be on the road and to to to, to share your art and to, to go to new places and uh but it was also very much an eye opener. And then like you know you you look at a wider context again what's you don't need to, to harp on about what's going on in the world um and not just in in terms of Ukraine but like obviously we, we, we've seen recent footage in, uh, around in, in, in Palestine and yeah. and beyond and maybe we have a bit of a western lens sometimes and choose to ignore things that are further afield and 
Um, and shame on us if that's the case, or, or maybe that's the only way we're able to cope with the injustice. So I don't like look at that's another podcast, and people yeah. know an awful lot more. We'll speak about that with uh, a greater understanding, uh, obviously. But um, yeah, like it just feels that that's um, one thing when I go back home is I'm noticing that 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 injustice, uh, which mm. breaks my heart, and, and I don't love that about it. So I don't. I love course, the resilience. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I love the strength of people being able to, to face up to that and be able to try and speak through the power, mm-hmm. and, and that's certainly a brilliant thing. Um, but it, it, it feels like it shouldn't have to be so hard for people to, yeah. to, to, to get by. Yeah, I agree 100%. And um, we've we've spoken about uh mental health obviously already, but how, how does um creativity help with your mental health? Um, it's like it's in, in many ways, Derek, um, like for a start, there's the cathartic thing of, of, of uh, like you mentioned earlier on about the gestalt therapy, uh, the, the, the previous guests that yeah. you had on, and actually that's a therapy that helped Pat Inglesby who, who okay. massively and, and, and the, that mindfulness. Uh, so there's a mindfulness that comes through uh, creativity and you're, you know, you're trying to connect to the now. Um, and if you do... There's a truth in that, and, and there's a discovery uh, within yourself. I don't mean sound airy fair, but it's the mm-hmm. it is part of yeah. it, you know. Um, but uh, so like that, that's help, helps you to be in the now. And then uh, the byproduct of that as well is if which you don't need to, but if you choose to share it with somebody else, there, there can be you can have new connections, and that can give you some sort of a sense of purpose and meaning. If you're you know just prompting other conversations and. Uh, and and then like you know I suppose taking that a little bit further and in, in the collaborating that that's formulating new connections again and, and we're having a conversation because you listen to the album and, and through, through through having Laura Murphy a fine poet from Leash, a lovely woman yeah I mean I, I met Laura um, she came to a workshop I did when I was an artist oh. and down on Leash a number of years ago and we've we've shared the stage together a few times and you know all those little connections just keep mm. you going and keep you curious and. Uh, but, but first and foremost, it's sort of your own little moment of self-discovery and for your own mindfulness. That, that's what it does for me. Um, not to, you know, I don't set out kind of going, I didn't start this going, I want to tour around or I want to be on yeah. the late show or, or whatever. And like, um, I'm fortunate that I get to do that. Um, so so I am, but, it, you know, it's not it's not my agenda to, 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 to be doing that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I understand. And, and it is that, like, it's interesting that I, I'm, you may be the first person to note that idea of connecting with people through the arts. And, and like, it doesn't have to be the same type of art. You know what I mean? Like, there could be someone could be an artist with regards to painting on a canvas, and then you could be, you know, doing poetry, and another person could be playing mad Jimi Hendrix solos or something. But it's the connection between that group of people who tend to have kind of a similar outlook on life as well, which I've noticed, which is all, all, also something very uh, positive. Mm. you know yeah yeah just look there's so many different avenues uh yeah. to to make those connections uh so there is and i, I like in some ways i'm just a failed musician uh <laughs> you know that that that, that oh, and that's that's why I, I lean into the talent of other people uh, <laughs> i disagree i disagree with that but that's all right we could we could agree to disagree on that one but like this is the easy question i suppose at the end and um, what do you like to do in your spare time um uh, well, at the moment, I'm watching Lost. Uh, All right. I, okay. I, I know that's like 20 years too late to the party. Um, so I'm watching that one with with my uh, with my partner. Is it so, good though? I haven't seen it. Is it good? Uh, it's yeah. So I I think I like I like the first two seasons a bit more. But we, what have we started? The are we in the fourth or fifth? We're in the fifth season now. Wow. Uh, but I, I'm committed to doing it now. So like I mean, I'm gonna gonna finish it. Uh, I, it's grand. It's not like high art yeah, yeah you don't always need high art do you? do you know what i mean you just need to kind of engage with something and it takes your mind off yeah so i'm watching that at the moment uh i i like to go for a walk most days i try and um get ten thousand steps in have the little watch here that, that kind of that keeps me uh, yeah. on top of that most of the time and um, i was really good at the start of the year and that's how i in one way, how I managed to, to lose a bit of weight. Um, I do like an old pizza now and again, obviously. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I try and get my 10,000 steps where I, I go over the, the bridge here, over the Slaney and around the town. Uh, I, I like to try and read in the morning. Um, 
I just actually a great book you should check out, Derek, is uh, Nina Simone's Gun. I have it over there. Uh, it's by oh, it's Warren, it. Ellis. Warren Ellis. I haven't read it yet. I'm looking forward to it, though. Oh, man, it's fucking great. Is it? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, you know what? I'm a slow reader. I'm dyslexic. Uh, I could have read it way quicker, but I had to ration it. Yeah. Because I was in, I, I, yeah. it gave me such a lovely feeling every day of all the goodwill uh, that went into to the stories that he tells. And uh, I, do, I didn't want it to end. So uh, that's a really beautiful book. At the moment, I'm reading Kitchen Confidential. Is it Kitchen Confidential? Yeah. yeah. Um, by um, Anthony Bourdain. Oh, yeah. So I, I, was, I, I watched most of Parts Unknown um, during the first lockdown, actually. I yeah. remember hearing him. Every, like, I'm a bit of a weirdo. If I hear something everywhere, or, <laughs> I know you don't want to know about it. Yeah, I'm like that um, as well, yeah. Uh, and then eventually I go, oh, fuck, I'll engage with this. Or what's this all about? Yeah. Uh, and then I, I watched a couple during the first uh, lockdown and I just liked his devilment and mm. his curiosity. And it wasn't what I was expecting. Uh, and, and, and in some ways he can be a, a, a bit bold, but he's also, I guess, since he's self-aware enough and, and mm. self-critical and uh, as well of all that. And so for my birthday... Uh, which was recently enough. Uh, that's what my better half got me for my birthday. Um, so I'm reading that at the moment and, and I'm enjoying that. And uh, then another book I read recently was Dieran uh, Negriffa, uh, A Ghost in the Throat. I've heard about it. I haven't, again, haven't read it. Good, brilliant, is that? Brilliant, brilliant book. Um, my, did you finish that? No. No. So she's, uh, she's uh, reading that at the moment. Uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing book and Dieran's a poet as oh. well and, and I've an interest in the Irish language and at the start of each chapter she, she gives a line from uh, this this poem and uh, then translates it um, and yeah it's, it's all it's 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 a bit about motherhood and, 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 and our history and, and, and poetry and um, it's just good to and, and at the beginning of the book as well and she says like this is a female text um, and kind of goes into what that means for her mm. um so look at there's no harm in, in in engaging of course there's no harm in engaging with different sorts of texts and different yeah. perspectives and, and that's what art it should be about and gives you empathy and uh like i would like to hopefully be a father at some point in time and uh, that's that's you know where i see my my life going in the next Hopefully, a couple of years all, all going well, and uh, there's no harm in uh, reading about a woman's perspective, on, of course, in part on motherhood. Uh, so it gave me a different insight there that that I um, appreciate. I appreciate so I do. So yeah, it's it's a brilliant book. You've mentioned, uh, and I wanted to ask. Uh, you've mentioned Nina Simone a couple of times. Um, have you seen the documentary on Netflix about Nina? Simone? Yeah, that is an incredible uh, documentary. Yeah, it is. Yeah, just yeah. um, I I immediately went out and bought the book that obviously the documentary is based on. Obviously, looking for for more because I'm a big big fan of Nina Simone and he's incredible singer, artist, songwriter, pianist, whatever you want to say. But you know the 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 tragedy of her of her life with regards to not knowing about bipolar disorder, you know, not knowing why she you know acted in certain ways. But when you see her on stage, it's just it's incredible to see someone that good you know, almost possessed in certain parts. Um, um, and she, you know, the idea of the movement she would make on stage when she moved away from the piano and that being something she saw when she was a kid growing up and seeing in church and people were doing it in church. And just, I, I just thought it was one of those, I've told everyone about it. I just think it's, it's, it's really up there, one of the, the best documentaries I've seen. You're gonna to have to read that book now. I have to read a book because I actually heard him himself and Nick Cave t talk about uh, Nina Simone uh, when she was at their festival, and <laughs> they asked what she wanted on a rider, and she said cocaine and sausages. And I said, <laughs> cocaine, champagne, and sausages. Champagne, yeah. cocaine, champagne. And, and, <laughs> and it's funny. So, like with the tour that I just did as well, you have to put in a bit of a rider, and not that I, you know, but, uh, yeah. Have uh, I can't ask for much. I'm 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 a lowly poet. Um, like I think what I uh, you know it, it, it's some fruit, a healthy meal, and ginger beer is uh, and maybe a few cans if, yeah. if they can stretch that far. But uh, I was I I emailed the lads going, is there anything that you are you okay with this? And uh, <laughs> but I was joking with them about that. Yeah. <laughs> champagne cocktail sauce. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was just brilliant the way like. 
and that he literally kept her piece of gum, didn't he? That's where the yeah. that's the genesis of the of the book. He, yeah. he kept the gum. She stuck it under the piano or something like. But uh, right. yeah. uh, amazing. But um, Stephen, wh- where can people find you? Uh, well, I mean, my website is stephenjamesmith.com and I have uh, the links to the usual mm-hmm. social media things there. Most of my handles are at SJS words. And uh, so you can you can connect there and I'll, I'll be posting about not just about my own shit. Like I, I try and share other people's arts. Mm relatively frequently as well uh but I'll, I'll post there about future events i might be doing or um if people were so kind as to give me a follow on spotify or mm. or, or better yet purchase the album yep. which i'll be updating my website as well with with some merch um but yeah you can you, you can find me there and, and maybe people would share uh I, I say this at every gig like not just my own art but like i have some nice videos online uh, or, or or the album Spotify whatever um, but if there's any artist that you like a simple thing that anybody can do that's free most people have social media to give that art a share and it may well create a new connection there for somebody else to connect with their art and that might impact somebody some in some way shape or form absolutely uh, so yeah if, if people are listening and they like what I'm waffling on about um, please give give my stuff a share uh, find it online that'd be, that'd be yeah pretty and get the album because it is absolutely brilliant um Stephen, it's been a, a pleasure uh, and a joy chatting to you today thanks very much derek i appreciate you reaching out and i'm, I'm sorry it, it took us a bit longer to do this uh than than we both expected we we're both uh being, being busy but uh I really well you just, have i <laughs> know like no I, I i well actually we had a date in and then i i fucked up um uh, my my i hardly apologize that I, I didn't mean any disrespect but that's your honesty you see because you 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 came on and you <laughs> You, you immediately told them about the dressing gown. <laughs> it's the honesty. You're, you're very, very honest about it. Yeah, too much, yeah. But okay. now, like, uh, thanks very much. And, and, and thanks for doing this. And, and I wish you all the best with, with the future podcast and with, uh, with the, the jujitsu as well. Yeah, thanks um, a million, yeah. I'll, I'll need to investigate that myself now. So Do. Yeah. Stick with me for one minute, Stephen. I'll close this out. I just will take a quick photo at the end and then we'll be on our way. Is that right? Yeah, sure, yeah. Excellent. I just also want to thank the usual people. I want to thank John for the technical support, basically all the technical stuff. Uh, my mom, my dad, granddad, Jaron Calvin for the, the logo and the music, the usual stuff. Um, subscribe to our YouTube if you would. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. I'll see check Stephen out as well. We're on Spotify, Anchor, Apple, Google Podcasts. Thanks to everyone for tuning in as ever. Um, yeah, as the title suggests, we'll be back next week. We always are. Um, Stephen, once again, thanks a lot. Good, man. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Bye.